TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The United States warns the Iranian proxy Hezbollah that unless it accepts a diplomatic solution that would de-escalate hostilities, Washington will support Jerusalem in the event of a full-scale war. Amid heightened prospects for a northern war, Hezbollah levels a threat towards Cyprus, warning against allowing Israel to use its airfields. Israeli Defense Minister Yav Gallant emphasizes that Israel is ready for anything that may evolve on Israel's northern front versus Hezbollah. The United States warns the Iranian proxy Hezbollah that unless it accepts a diplomatic solution to hostilities, Washington will support Jerusalem in the event of a full-scale war. U.S. Special Envoy Amos Hochstein, who is traveling back and forth between Jerusalem and Beirut, reportedly relayed a warning to Lebanon's leadership that within five weeks' time, unless Hezbollah withdraws its operatives and weaponry to north of the Litani River, in accordance with UN Security Council Resolution 1701, Israel would launch a war to enforce this demand, and the United States intends to declare its unequivocal support for Jerusalem to that end. Meanwhile, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant and IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Helzi Levy attended a top military brass situational assessment at IDF Northern Command, during the course of which Jerusalem's top defense official highlighted ongoing preparations for war with Hezbollah. We are holding a situational assessment in Northern Command with focus on Northern Command, but also broader than it, with the Chief of General Staff, the Northern Command Commander, Air Force Chief of Staff, the Home Front Command Chief of Staff, the Northern Corps Commander, and the Commanding Staff. From my perspective, this action emanates out of the need to be prepared for the continuation of our actions. Preparedness, readiness, and mobilization against anything that can emerge. The IDF accumulated significant experience in battle as a result of the war, including in the South and in the North. This is true for all of the commands and the collaborations between them. This is also true for the field commanders, the airmen, at the home front, etc. We are completing the field and air preparedness and are strengthening the intelligence arrays and are getting ready for any possibility. Defense Minister Gallant went on to stress Israel's primary mission when it comes to the Northern Front to return Israel's northern residents to their homes with reinforced security insured. We must remember the basic situation. The situation is that Hezbollah launched a war against us, albeit limited, on October 8th, a day after Hamas, and since then it did not halt it. From this perspective, we have a responsibility to alter the situation on our north and return the citizens with security to their homes, and we will find the way to make this action possible. When I look at the citizens, and I meet them and also their representatives, they all have an expectation and I think that this expectation is justified and we will need to implement it. RDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Helzi Alevi for his part, highlighted to Defense Minister Gallant that while the IDF has waged eight months of war, it managed to maintain the highest level of vigilance and success. The unrelenting attitude emanates from the IDF's core focus on the mission at hand to ensure the future of Israel's northern communities. <laughs> I genuinely think that for over eight months, Northern Command, together with the Air Force, the Intelligence Directorate and the Home Front, have conducted very qualitative activities, both defensive and offensive. We know that maintaining this high quality and achievements day by day, week by week, over time, is not easy, and yet we do so with very great success. We continually remember, as you've said, that our mission is to return the residents to their communities and homes with security and also stability for a long period of time. I think that, 
genuinely, Northern Command and all of its forces is operating day and night to fulfill this mission in an exemplary manner. Amid rising prospects of a northern war erupting, Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah held a televised address during the course of which he proclaimed that his Iranian proxy is ready for all-out war. And while Israel intends to abide by the laws of war and international humanitarian law, Nasrallah claimed that his internationally designated terror group would not abide by any constraints. If the war was imposed on Lebanon, the resistance Hezbollah will fight with no regulations, no rules, and no ceilings. It knows that there will be no place in the entity safe from our missiles and our drones. The Hezbollah secretary general, who is essentially a foreign member of the Ayatollah regime in Tehran, went on to proclaim that his terror group has over 100,000 operatives and a fully prepared arsenal of munitions to devastate Israel. Separately, Nasrallah also relayed a threat to the government of Cyprus, an EU member state, that if it would allow Israel to use its airfields, Hezbollah would launch a full-scale attack against the East Mediterranean island. The Cypriot government must be warned that opening Cypriot airports and bases for the Israeli enemy to target Lebanon means that the Cypriot government has become part of the war and the resistance Hezbollah will deal with it as part of the war. In response to the threat by the leader of the Iranian proxy, Cypriot President Nikos Christodoulides denied any suggestion Cyprus was taking sides in any conflict. The Republic of Cyprus is not involved in any way in the hostilities. The Republic of Cyprus is not a part of the problem. The Republic of Cyprus is part of the solution. And our role, as it was manifested for example through the humanitarian corridor, is recognized not only by the Arab world but by the entire international community. The Cypriot head of state went on to stress that while Hezbollah's threats are alarming, Nicosia maintains open communications with Lebanon and Iran to de-escalate the tensions. The statements are pleasant and they do not correspond and the attempt to present an image of Cyprus being involved in military operations. Under no circumstances. Of course, there is a channel of communication with the government of Lebanon and the government of Iran. There is a channel of communication through the diplomatic route. While Hezbollah did not immediately react to the Cypriot president's remarks, the citizens of his country have been largely reassured. Personally, I don't feel any concern because the relations that our state, our government has developed with strong allies offer us a security and thus we feel at ease. I heard about Hezbollah's threats, but I'm not afraid because I feel safe. Because as the president said, we have nothing to do with the war, on the contrary we help in order to bring peace to the region and we provide help to the Palestinians. That's why I feel safe in Cyprus. Returning to Israel's northern front where salvos of rockets have been launched from Lebanese territory towards civilian and military infrastructure today, in one of the incoming barrages, a rocket struck a private residence in the border community of Zarit. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. And while the eight-month war, which Hezbollah instigated on October 8th, has inflicted severe damage on civilian infrastructure throughout northern Israel, during a tour of Israel's northern aerial defense array, including a discussion of the top IDF officer with service members who've been directly engaged in protecting Israel's northern skies, essentially confronting over 5,000 incoming projectiles since the start of the war. We are in a state of war for over eight months, and you have defended for over eight months, providing a complex defense.
This defense gives a great deal of security to civilians and the IDF, but we are not satisfied with that. We have many more soldiers in the IDF who are engaged in an offensive against Hezbollah. Also today, we targeted several Hezbollah operatives, and yesterday Hezbollah released a video showcasing a capability that we knew about. And we are preparing and creating solutions to deal with such capabilities and others that in due course you will see them implemented when needed. We of course have infinitely greater capabilities, of which I think the enemy is only familiar with few of them and will face them at the right time. And look, our test is to see that today we defend, tomorrow we win, the day after tomorrow we return the residents to a much safer reality, and with them, we also build and restore and make this beautiful area stronger than it was before the war. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. In light of TV7's broadcast schedule related to Midsummer Eve, TV7 Israel News will not broadcast tomorrow night. Nevertheless, we will air our daily Israel at War update on our website, among other channels carrying our programs around the world. Separately, it is important for us to highlight that TV7 Israel's productions are exclusively donation-based, with all of our productions available free of charge. Therefore, your support is essential when it comes to our productions, and we would deeply appreciate it if you'd consider making a donation. You can do so via our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. Last but not least, I'd like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Essen, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and Mevolach, and God willing, we'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.